I want to help give you a tool to walk out of here with. But, but I also want to point out something. Something that goes back to our story. Something that goes back to Esau. And, and he had no idea the significance of his, of his selling his birthright for a bowl of stew. Because 400 years later, when God would speak to Moses, he would identify to Moses himself as I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But for a bowl of stew, it could have been I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. Those are the things we have no idea what we're giving up for that desire down deep inside. So I put at your tables a pen and a card. What I want you to do is I want you to write down a question. So what I want, we talked about reframing. And I want, to write, I want you to write down this question. What is my desirable future? You don't have a card? Oh, I get it. Second question, what is at stake? No. What is my desirable future? What is at stake? That's all I got. I did this this week, and what I, what I decided is that I wish I had done this a long time ago because what I needed to do was to reframe my desires, those things that I think I'm going to die if I don't get them. And then what I decided to do is I, I wrote down, what is my desirable future? What is at stake? And the first thing that's at stake is my relationship with God. And, what, and, and the closeness and the intimacy that I desire with him, my giving in to those appetites affects my relationship with God. And then I went one step further, and I said, the second thing that's affected... my wife, Tracy. My, my appetites left unchecked. My desirable future is an intimate relationship with my wife. How am I responding to those appetites? And how is that affecting my future relationship with her? The third one I wrote down. I don't have enough pictures for all of these. It was my son, Michael, and his wife, Emily. My daughter, Michelle. And then the rest of my family. But there's more to it than that. I, I, my, I've got my other son, my stepson, Jimmy. My daughter, Desiree. And in a couple months, I've got uh, twin grandchildren that are going to be here. And that's what's at stake. My parents, Tracy's parents, who I call mom and dad, that's what's at stake. If I give in to my desires, if I give in to those appetites and I leave them unchecked, this is what's at stake. Last thing I've got on here. It's my future of what God wants to do in my life. My calling. What he's called me to do. It's a big deal. For a week. 
write down what is my desirable future what is at stake put it on this card carry it around when, when you when you get to that place in your life where you feel that thing welling up inside of you stop reframe it put a picture in front of you this is what I'm giving up for this it's just a stupid ball stew I want to share one more thing um, there, there's a guy here that I, I want to close this out with and about um, we got an email the other day when I read it, it, it took me to that place where I realized that everything so much in life is so unimportant. So much of the things we put our effort toward, so much of the stuff that we spend our time spinning our wheels. And I couldn't help but think when I read this email, that puts it all back in perspective. So with his permission, And we're going to pray for him after I read this, if I can even get through this. He says, My darling Sue, the love of my life, is very near her end. It's been a rough two days. This hospice has begun their job, and she will be as comfortable as possible as she leaves this world and enters eternity with our Savior. I ask for prayer for an easy move for her place to her place that he has prepared for her. This is the hardest thing I've ever had to do, to say goodbye. To the, to the greatest gift God has given to me, I trust in my Savior and I know that Sue will be well cared for. I look forward to joining her there. But for now, I have a family that she loves so much, and their care has fallen upon me. I ask for his guidance that I will do this to his will and glorify his name. Um, this is Bob right here and Sue is his wife so what I'd like to do I'd like to pray for him I'd like us all to put arms hands connect tables one to each other all tying back to Bob one by one don't leave the circle unbroken And Woody, I'm going to pray first, and I'd ask that you close, please. 